Grand Casino. Let your story begin. Get ready for Skillet, Sebastian Bach, Striper, and many, many more at Rock Timber. September 10th and 11th, for tickets to two days of Rock Solid 5, head to rocktimber.net. Access will be limited. Work will take about two days. And taking a live look at traffic, this is the which way traffic can at Kellogg and Eastern. Any morning traffic looking pretty good coming out the door this morning. Going to visit the traffic cams. We haven't seen anything too major that'll impact your drive into work this morning. And if you need to fill up the gas tank, it's right there around 282 here in Wichita. Well, the heat is on this week. Should be a quiet one, though, overall. would suggest as early as Sunday, Monday. I think it's more of a Tuesday, Wednesday thing. Again, I think we go from heat to well below normal temperatures with that cold front. Have a great Monday, everyone. We'll see you again soon.
store employees, those essential workers to get as many generators and uh, uh, rest uh, restore supply uh, to people who need it most as quickly as possible. And then they would uh, allow people to come back and return to their homes to see uh, what they're gonna be coming home to. Um, so we're gonna be walking around the area, uh, trying to find out more, um, trying to talk to some folks and see how they're doing and just checking in with them. Uh, it's gonna be a long day. We're gonna see a lot of damage and uh, it's gonna be quite emotional for some people, but uh, we're here for it, we're strapped in and uh, we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it all together. In Terrebonne Parish, I'm Chris Rosado. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Chris. It is hard to see those pictures and images here, but we did want to give you that look of what home is looking like, especially if you evacuated from the area and you wanted to know what your hometown looks like. That's just, that's just one on the lot. And, and as Chris mentioned, as the sun comes up and it is coming up now, they're going to be around and, and check on the damage there. Just one of those spots uh, that, that took a, a pretty big hit. Um, so Chris is there. Mm -hmm. Our Kelly Hubbard is live this morning. Has been. She's riding around a tight nine. She is. She's in Ascension Parish, and I believe she's in the Dutchtown area this morning, riding around to see what Ida may have done in that area. Kelly. Good morning to you guys. All of you watching this morning. It's going to be an emotionally tough day, but we're going to be here for you. So right now we're in Ascension Parish. We're in the Dutchtown area. But I'm going to flip this camera over for you. This is our roof cam. And a lot of the people around here and just kind of everywhere are going to be assessing the damage around their homes. A lot of you um, may have uh, parts of your roof that have been just completely rip ripped off by Hurricane Ida. Uh, so if we take a look around, yeah, you can just see what happened to uh, this person's home. You can just see the roof completely peeled back on the, the top of this home right here. So we're going around assessing the damage and we're getting a better look now that we're heading into the 7 o'clock hour. Um, yeah, it's just a kind of gloomy, gloomy day. Uh, not what you normally see when we wake up on nine is this morning on a Monday morning. Normally it's, you know, bright and sunny typically. And today is just a little bit different. But more people are heading on the, the roads. We're on uh, Highway 74 right now. And uh, this is just uh, one of the many trees that are down on this road. This one in particular, we've been on a lot of the roads in Ascension Parish. And uh, we've had multiple people kind of stop by and tell us that this is probably one of the worst ones just because of all the trees so you're going to want to kind of slow and um, really watch out as you make your way around some of them and if you go further up on highway 74 you're going to notice that there's a sun has started to come up we're able to get a better picture of what's happening you can see all the debris just on the, the corner here just look at all of that so you're going to see a lot of that around your homes waking up this morning as well so we're going to continue to monitor the area, but that's what we're seeing as of right now, uh, this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly was riding around there in Dutchtown. If you just joined us and you saw some pictures there from Titan 9, that's Kelly Harvard reporting from that area, showing us some uh, down debris there yeah. in the Dutchtown area. It looks like that's going to be, um, that's going to be the major player for a lot of our, our area, right? Uh, uh, thankfully, because we were right on that line, man, it was razor thin, right? Depending on where this thing was gonna go. Uh, didn't get the all that rain that we could have got. Uh, didn't lead to all the, the potential flooding that maybe some were thinking about, but we did get some of this wind. And so yeah, the debris in the rows, the debris in the yards, that's what you're going to see. As the daylight comes out, we're getting a better picture of what it's looking like. So we're going to try to check in with our yeah. crews on the ground in just a little bit, yep. but we need to check out the new forecast with Dr. Steve Caparata. Hey, Steve. Hey, Liz. Yeah, and I'm starting to get some pictures sent to me, too. Uh, just got a couple of images out of Walker, so a tree's down, one on a home. And uh, we've got some images and video coming in out of Mandeville, where it looks pretty rough. I'm going to try to gather some of that together, and we'll share that with you just a little bit. Here's what we've got happening outside this morning. Uh, Ida is continuing to weaken fairly quickly now. And this is Back the major road. I just let you know, but as the center begins basically to, uh, impossible at this point, you know. Starting to see a little band of some light rain develop back to the southwest. Gotcha, uh, making it out clear. Back into the Florida parishes and to near Baton Rouge. Uh, but you see some moderate rains coming down in southwest Mississippi. Heavier stuff towards Hattiesburg, extending down to Bay St. Louis, Biloxi. Clyde Elk starting to see some heavy downpours. Uh, they certainly don't need it either. Still tropical storm warnings. Uh, Baton Rouge eastward uh, through Hammond, Slidell, down to New Orleans, and up into Mississippi. Again, maximum winds now at 45 miles per hour, moving to the north at 8. So the center.
Mariners going to pass very good Jackson. Likely it's a drop with pressure later on today. Moved across north from Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee. And uh, there's a concern there will be additional flooding rains along its path, even up into the uh, Del Marva. So uh, not done with Ida, even as it lifts away from the Gulf Coast. Another little new bit of information. So we've told you a lot about this uh, peak wind gust of 172 miles per hour at Port Bouchon. It was also reported as a peak sustained wind of 149 miles per hour. Well, Philippe Papin, who is a forecaster at the National Hurricane Center, has done some detective work early this morning, found the manual on uh, the uh, anemometer uh, the, from the picture that was shared by the National Weather Service. It was able to track down by looking at the picture that the 149 was an instantaneous measurement, not a sustained wind. Um, so it's a technicality, but what that means is it's likely not going to qualify as a sustained wind at landfall. It doesn't take anything away from it, but basically what we're looking at, if you've seen that picture, really we're kind of seeing that uh, display show two different instantaneous values, a 149 and probably a peak instantaneous value of 172. It's off the charts, ridiculous any way you slice it. Uh, but you see how widespread those valleys over 100 miles per hour were across Terrebonne, Lafourche, Lower Jefferson Parishes, and again, even a 110 here in the city at our sister station, WVUE. Flash flood warnings. These aren't watches. These are warnings. Look at how widespread they are uh, across the North Shore, up into Mississippi. Look at much of South Mississippi, much of South Alabama. We've still got the flash flood warning around Laplace. We've got the ongoing trouble uh, around Lafitte, uh, Lafitte, where we've had some levee issues, and also here around the Lions and Plaquemines Parish, where we've had the levee issues. So flash flood warnings for those ongoing uh, problems. I do have an update to the river stages, specifically for the Tangipaho at Kentwood. A uh, significant increase to the crest here uh, released by the National Weather Service River Forecast Center a little while ago. Now forecasting a crest of 20 and a half feet, which would be right around a record crest for Kentwood. So a pretty big number coming in on that. Uh, here's why we're seeing some of the bigger numbers across the Tickfaw and Tangipaho basins and not so much across the Amy because that's where the heaviest rains came down. Now we do have issues along the lower reaches of the Amy, more so uh, tied into the wind-driven water and surge, although we did get some of the heavy rains over the lower A meet too, but the upper part of the basin did a lot better than the lower part of the basin. And we, as we bring it in closer, you can see that. So as you go across the upper part of the basin, you're looking at uh, two, three, four inches of rainfall. That's pretty manageable. And that's why uh, the forecast crest numbers we've been showing you since yesterday and last night, uh, I think Jay, Jared, Jeff, we're all mentioning those numbers are probably gonna come down. Uh, so we're just awaiting a new forecast. Those should be coming down, but those of you along the upper reaches of the AP I think are gonna make out uh, fairly well the way things should take its shape. But French settlement down, especially down in Morapaw, it's a different story. We are gonna have some water issues, but as we look at this, you can see where the heaviest rain came down. So extending from St. Charles in the St. John the Baptist Parish across Lake Morapaw, Killian Springfield, uh, to near places like Holden, Albany, Hammond, uh, over to uh, Ponchatoula, Robert, all in on that, extending to near Covington and Mandeville, Mandeville. That was sort of our bullseye for the heavy rains, and you can see some of these numbers, 12, 14, 15 inches of rainfall estimated. Once again, this is a live look on False River. So False River is what we call an oxbow lake. It's a former meander yeah. of the Mississippi River that eventually gets blocked off. off at this but point. False River typically looks more like a river. It's uh, kind of flat on so most days, right? Doesn't typically look like this. this. It's rocking out there pretty good right now. The docks that are uh, out there uh, near Satterfields. That's our Sky 9 view brought to you by our Lady Lake. So right now winds are west at 18. Two, uh, the ground's still very wet. So any trees, especially the shallow water ones, uh, shallow rooted ones like water oaks, uh, gusts can still bring those down. So we're not out of the woods on additional power outages developing, although those should be more sporadic through time. All right, let's give you a look at the extended forecast. Good rain chances today. Now, I think the threat of additional heavy rain today would be isolated. Most of us should make out all right. There's the potential one or two heavier bands could set up. It looks like this morning, a little greater threat of that maybe in the coastal parishes, 
but manageable today, I think, for most of us. Tuesday, Wednesday, scattered showers and storms. And then by the end of the week on into the weekend, actually could see some significant improvements in our weather. Not only drier, but fairly comfortable out. Humidity may drop down. Lows could dip into the upper 60s, highs in the upper 80s, and then returning to more of our typical uh, late summer weather as we head into early next week. Back to you guys. All right, Steve, thank you. We appreciate you. And of course, we've been talking all morning about power outages because we want to give you an update uh, in the area. If you are watching from a different part of the state, maybe you evacuated and want to know whether your area has power. And uh, one of the major players, obviously, uh, is Demco in our little part of the world. David Latana is actually on the phone with us uh, this morning from Demco. David, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Matt. How are you? Doing well. Here with, uh, obviously, Liz Co. as well. And it is uh, the morning after a, a big-time storm rips through Louisiana. Uh, when you talk about your energy grid, what kind of numbers are we looking at right now as far as outages? It was very high. We saw as close as 100% out as we could. And, you know, we have control center operators that can make switches remotely and uh, move load around and get people back on. So at this time, we're experiencing right at 73,000 members without power. Hey, it's blocked off. There's a lot they have been blocked off. Trees, okay. Of course, that causes havoc with both overhead and underground utilities uh, with the root balls that are coming up out of the ground. Uh, just uh, taking a walk around one of these subdivisions we serve, there's, uh, I see five down trees just from where I can stand in one spot, I can see. And they're large trees, lots of vegetation on the ground. Um, still some rain coming, still gusts that occur. Like Steve said, there's uh, weakened root systems with all the water. So we're seeing those trees, they can still come down. It still can be a hazardous situation. So, uh, but our crews are out, uh, the wind speeds are down so that they can get out and get up in a bucket and make those repairs. They can climb those poles and make that uh, repair to a, yes That's sir. quite telling. Uh, the damage that is done here. You know, look, it's something that we saw with, you know, with Gustav coming through here and knocking down the trees, falling into to power lines and power poles. It's just something we're going to have to deal with again. Um, what are the resources that you can pull from when you talk about, uh, you know, co-ops and cooperatives? And what kind of resources are you able to pull in to help you out? First of all, we always like to say our, our most valuable resources are human resources, You're the right. guys and girls right. that are out there doing that work. So our internal folks, of course, are all ready to go, ready to uh, attack the outage. And also we have internal contractors, those from within the state that are here immediately. They were here to stage and sit up with us. And then even we'll have this cooperative agreement with other electric cooperatives around the region, even around the, uh, the nation. We saw uh, folks coming from as far off as Wyoming during Gustav. Uh, we'll have uh, folks coming in from Florida, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri. There's a large group coming from Missouri. So we have a cooperative agreement. With well, I know that there is obviously a contract, a cooperative in place to help you.
Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not I'm pretty sure the person got to be here, though.
And that's it, there you have it. That's a scene coming out of New Orleans, Louisiana. This is the West Bank. Got a few good clips, and I think this is where we will shut it down. Um, we have the search and rescue out here. They've been deployed. Uh, they're, they're here. So they're setting up right now, try to find people. There's also a bus out here. Probably can see it once I call me. There is a bus, and I think that's just for the people who are traveling. And if they rescue anyone there, they'll have a means to get to shelter and safety. So, this is it. Coming out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Ida.